Uh, verbal behavior is uh, based on B.F. Skinner's analysis of language. So he is a really famous behavioral psychologist. And he wanted to analyze language. And he considered language to be like any other behavior, whether it's uh, crawling, brushing your teeth. They're all similar in the sense that they have an impact on the environment. So he wanted to look at language. Well, what, why does language occur? What impact does it have on the environment? So it's, it's one thing to look at the topography or the form of language, why a person says a specific word, why they uh, construct a sentence with nouns, pronouns, uh, past tense, etc. Well, how about, the, how about the actual function of language? Why does it occur in, under certain environmental conditions? So that's what he was concentrating on. And he broke down language into these different functional, it's kind of, they're called operants. So language occurs under different conditions. Let's say they're thirsty, so they want, they want juice. So there's this motivation for a liquid, they're thirsty, right? And so it's a little child, mom walks in, the, the child wants something to drink, and child sees mom and says, juice please, and the child gets juice. Well. The environmental condition which, in which that behavior occurred was thirsty, presence of mom, this behavior occurs, and it has a certain impact on the environment. That impact on the environment is access to juice. Um, other situations, you have text, you have intraverbals, and these are, these are other verbal operants that uh, Skinner identified. And so when we work with kids with autism, we're not only looking at the form of what they say, we're not only looking at the words they use or the signs they use or the pictures that they use to communicate, but we're also looking at the situations in which that communication occurs. Is it occurring when they're deprived of a certain thing? When they're thirsty, hungry, haven't had access to a specific toy in a while? Is it under that, that set of conditions? Or do they look out the window and they see the sun or the, the clouds and they say, I see the clouds or I see the sun. So th those are different types of situations. And we try teaching in all of those specific situations or across all of those verbal operants. Because in the history of teaching kids with autism, there was initially a focus on just teaching almost like receptive and expressive labels. So I show a picture of a ball and the child says ball. But when they haven't had access to a ball in a while and they see a ball, are they going to go up to mom and say, I want ball, please? And what we found is that didn't occur often. You would, you would often have to program specifically across these verbal operants. That's what, that's what we discovered, that you have to program across these verbal operants or that behavior may not generalize to other situations. So having an understanding of verbal behavior, using verbal behavior principles to guide treatment is uh, extremely important. And, and I think it represents um, kind of the evolution of our field. And even though Skinner came up with his book, Verbal Behavior, and I think it was in the 50s, um, in terms of us embracing that analysis, it's kind, of a, it's kind of a new thing. But it's exciting because lots of kids are benefiting as a consequence of that uh, information.